morning service. Amen. We'd like to say good morning to everyone. Happy Father's Day to all our fathers all over the world, but especially here at Straightway Church of Christ written in heaven. Happy Father's Day to all of you, and may God bless you and keep you as our prayer. Amen. And we thank God that he has allowed you to see another Father's Day. Let's be good fathers in this new year. Amen. We thank God for his goodness and we praise God that you have decided to join us this morning and to praise God with us on this great Father's Day. Amen. We thank God for what he's doing now. Amen. You can send your prayer requests in. Amen to area code five six one three five one four eight eight one. Again, may God bless you and happy Father's Day to all of you. Welcome to our services here at Straightway Church of Christ written in heaven in Beverly Park, Florida, where Apostle Holy Johnson is your pastor. Amen and founder. Amen. And we pray God's blessings on you. Look where he brought me from. Oh, look where he brought me from. Oh, he brought me out of darkness. Oh, the range of holiness. Look where he brought me from. Oh, look where he brought me from. Oh, look where he brought me from. Oh, Thank you. 
Amen. We thank God, amen, for the prayer request. Amen. We pray that God bless the clergymen all over the world. Amen. amen. And a special blessing upon our fathers today. Amen. amen. After this song, Deacon Terrence love it. We leave us in prayer. Sweet people from my soul. Sweet for my soul, sweet spirit, sweet for my soul, my soul is so Thank you. 
for me. Jesus, I never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I never forget. No.
understanding of your word. Help them to walk in your word, in your ways, in your statutes, God. In the name of Jesus, we ask him to move everywhere, all over the land, God. Let people know that you are real and that you are God. Without you, we have nothing. We have no being. We're not even able to move without you. But thank you for breathing the breath of life into us. Oh, God, we praise you. Thank you. Oh, God, for every limb in our body. And how you happen to move, God. To operate the way you made it to move. Thank you, Jesus. God, we asking you to look on the sick everywhere today. God, we know there's no distance in prayer. Go in every hospital room. Church every sick body. Every sick man, God. Do it now, God. God, we speak to their bodies. We command them to line up with the word. Hallelujah. Line up with the word of God. Oh God, oh God, just have your way. Oh God, those that don't know you for the part of their sins. Touch their minds. Get on in their heart. In their souls. Do a new thing in their life. Help them to walk in the newness of life. Oh God, we say thank you. You know the We say thank you for everything that you are doing. We curse every hand. Oh God, that's not like you. We curse it now. Curse it back to the pits of hell. You take control. Let everybody know you are able. God, you don't have to do anything. But touch their minds. Let them know, God, that you have released them. You have healed them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now God just bless your people everywhere. Now oh God bless your people everywhere. All over the world oh God. Let them know that you are real. And God every place you've been taken out of. Oh God we are requesting that you come back. In the name of Jesus. In the churches, in the hearts of men, women, and children. God, in the name of Jesus, have your way. Speak to our minds, our hearts. Lead us and guide us in which way to go. Somebody is at the crossroad. Oh God, they don't know where to go. But God, touch their hearts. Touch their minds. Let them know the right way to go. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God, everything that you promised us. God, we've been waiting. We've been thanking. Do it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, do it in the name of Jesus. God, we can't set you where we ought to. But God, give us a stationary place. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, speak to people that you need to speak to. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we rely on you. God, those that feel like they want to throw in the tower, Touch their minds. Give them a mind to live right. In the name of Jesus. Now God, as we come to your people, these are yours, God. Give us what to say. How to say. In the name of Jesus. Save the unsaved. Reclaim the backsliders. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, let your word go out. Don't let it go out and don't accomplish what you said before. 
but God touch every heart, every mind, every soul in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember the bereaved families everywhere. Oh God, church now. Send deliverance. Let them know that you are hiding place. If they run to you, you will give them shelter. Thank you, God. Thank you for having your way. And we thank you for your love. Bless us and we shall be blessed. Keep us and we will be kept. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And 
we're going to take a thought from, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This is what Joshua said. Amen. It's not good enough to see what other people are doing, but you got to know yourself that you are going to serve the Lord. Me and my household. If you don't want to serve it, Amen. then you don't belong in my house. So we're going to talk about that. The father and the family. Amen. Fathers not like they used to be. They used to live according to the word. They didn't want to falter in any way. In most cases, it is the spiritual leadership of the father, or it should be. But most of them not even in the home now. But they're supposed to be the leader of the home, which determines the direction in which the family will move spiritually. Most of them not there to teach their children the ways of the Lord. They see them every now and again. But according to the word of God, you ought to be the leader of your house. And this is scripture. Some people say that was old times. But show me a house where everybody leads and I'll show you a mess. What a responsibility rests upon the Father for the spiritual as well as the physical where being a welfare of the family. Now you can't find them. They drop them babies and they leave. Everything mostly is left on the mother. And when it's like that, we have to do the best we can. We have to teach them the ways of the Lord. Teach them to walk in the statutes of God. It is his leadership. It's the Father's duty, according to God. The Father should be over family worship. Tell me how many homes are doing that now. Not me. What a blessing when an entire family worship together in the church as well as in the home. Do we do that? We need to go back to the Bible. If a father is remiss in his responsibility in either area, he will reap sorrow and sadness later on. Why? Because you're going to go look for them children and they ain't going to be studying. They ain't going to pay you no amount. Because you didn't give them the attention that they needed when they were growing up. To live the way God wants us to live. When Christ is allowed to be head of a house in all faces and how to conduct yourself you got to teach them from infancy up. Fathers will find problems of guidance because you weren't there to do what you needed to do. That mother got to do it all. I know it's fathers today. But fathers, y'all need to step up and do better. Now we're going to talk about family love. Love can be the difference between an infant's normal physical progress and slow progress. Well, you say, how is that? Teach them the ways of God while they are small. When they get up, they will be everywhere in trouble. And you got to run and get them out of jail. But because you wasn't there, they didn't get there. This has normal physical, this has been proven in hospitals where babies have been kept for various reasons. 
they sleep, see that your child is slow. They keep them there. To try to teach them what they need. Glory to God. Despite clinical conditions of food and other care, then the progress made by slum children who has poor care but mother love. That mother gonna do everything she can. But where's the father? He come around every now and then. He want to get back with the mother, but he ain't paying the children no attention. Love is vitally important in a child's upbringing. And this the father as well as the mother can provide. Other people come in and try to substitute, but they always look for that love from their mother and their father. Therefore, we as a family got to learn to serve God together. The family learns. Children as well as parents learn valuable lessons and getting along together through experience. You got to learn how to get along with them that live with you before you reach outside. The father is a learner also, but in most cases, he is a teacher by example and himself. Live it in front of your children. That teach them better than anything else. Family sharing times are important. You ought to come together as a family. You ought to have times that you study the Word of God together. Yeah. The Bible tells us that even when we sit around in the house, we ought to read the Word of God to them. Family fun together is important. It's good to have fun. But let them know, before we go to have fun, we got to do what is necessary. Amen. But many times we are not there. We can't teach them because we are nowhere around. Amen. So we got to teach our children. It's important for the family to come together. You need to study the Word of God together. You need to have fun together. You need to do chores together. The family prayers. Remember to teach your children. You don't eat to after you say the grace at the table. Amen. But that's the grace that's not just praying. You only praying over your food. That's one aspect of life that you need to teach. A time for family devotion together is vital to spiritual growth of all of them. Not just the father, not just the mother, but it's for the whole family. The mother, father, and the children. Christianity it's fellowship as well as being a way of life. Mm -hmm. You got to live it in the home first. Charity begins where? At home. And then it spreads the growth. And the family unit is the most basic part of the fellowship. You ought to do that at home before you try to take it anywhere else. Family plan. The time when father was the dictator head of the home has passed. It shouldn't have been. But most of the times we want to get together without the father. And we make plans. We don't include it. But the Bible said we should do it what? Together. Today, a democratic atmosphere 
ship for me or for the Christian home. You need to promote that in your home. Amen. You got to promote it. You just can't talk it. In other words, put it in action. Most of the fun of family activities lies in planning things together. Not apart, but together. The same togetherness should characterize the financial aspects of family life. It was a time that we came together and brought our money together. But how many know you got to seek God about that now? So mama take your money and run off with it. Then you and the children left with nowhere to turn. They'll take their money, use it in foolishness. Knowing that food, you need to buy groceries. You got to have a place to stay. You got bills that need to be paid. If that electric bill is not paid, you're not going to have light. If that water bill is not paid, you're not going to have water. And children, that's a hard life. So we say to you, come together as a family. Let God lead you in everything you do. And you'll find it much easier to rear your children in the way that God has you to raise them. We don't have control on them anymore. They talking back. Some of them, they don't want to fight their mother or father. But I told him, I got that rod there. He said, bring him in. If I have to strike you with it and bring you in, I'll do it. But make sure you are living the life that God wants you to do. You live right in the home. Let them see God shining out and speaking out of your life. Then you can bring them up in the right way. But if they see you living in a kind of way, all kind of mess coming out of your mouth, they say, well, if Dad can do it, I can do it. But remember all of these aspects of family life lie in the power of the father and mother. To utilize, use them in the right way. And you will be able to bring your children up the way they should be brought up. In Proverbs it says, uh, spare the rod, you spoil the child. Now they don't even want you to live. But if you fail to teach them what is right, somebody else is going to use a rod. And it's not going to be the kind you get. If a very real sense. Family happiness rests in the hands of the father and mother. He or she should be able to speak for the family. You should know what you teach your children. How you teach them to live. Sometimes you can do all you can do. Anybody ever heard of family or generational curses? Sometimes they'll pass down. But if you live the word before them, they don't know nothing but the word. I'm saying to you, father and mother, teach your children how to live right. Later in life, you will see them making the right decisions. Going the right places. Teaching their children how to live holy. But you can't do it if you're not holy. You can only teach them what you know. But we send to you today, if you don't have it right, go to the Word of God. Joshua said, as for me, and my life. We will serve the Lord. Not me, 
we will serve the Lord. You need to let your family know today. But I'm telling you, you can't live one way for a lifetime and then come and tell them, now I'm going to live hope. They're going to tell you to get out their face. But do it from infancy up. Let them see you live hope. Let them see you helping other people. Living for the Lord. And they'll follow in your footsteps. As for me and my household, I, we're going to serve the Lord. If you stay in here, you're going to serve. Amen. Like my mom used to tell me, if you ain't saved, you're going to act that way in here. Amen. So we say it to you today. Fathers, be an example to your church. Let them know God come first. And if you do that, he will provide everything else for you. May God bless you. The choice is yours. God is a loving, caring father. And he desired that no one shall be lost. So you out there in the sound of my voice on this awesome word that God just spoke through the servant. And you realize that you're out of place. And you're out of order. And you're without the God that was just presented to you. We extend unto you a heartfelt, loving, genuine invitation to be adopted into this royal family that we are a part of. And entrance into this family comes through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. If you're without the Father today, or you were once part of the royal family, the family of God, and somehow another old life journey, you got off course, take this opportunity and accept this invitation to come back. The word tells us that those that confess their sins, he will in no wise cast them away. Repentance is a turning away from an old sinful life that you once used to live. And every man, woman, boy, and girl that was born was born with a sinful nature. But through repentance and forgiveness of our sins, ask Him to forgive you of every sin known and unknown. And if you're not sure, ask Him to enlighten you, bring it to your attention. So that you can ask for forgiveness of that also. And ask Him to be your Lord and your Savior over your life and over your soul. And from a sincere, genuine, truthful heart, if you ask Him to forgive you, you make an earnest effort to turn from that life of sin and accept the forgiveness that comes through Jesus Christ. The word of God in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is, not maybe, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. So if you pray that prayer from a sincere heart, we thank you. And we praise God for you. Don't let the devil play with your mind and try and break up your pants. And try and tell you, oh, you're not this or that. Just let that devil know he is already defeated. And you are a work in progress. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. And we thank God for you. Amen. 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 And at this time, amen.
we're going to have our pastor come once again before we go to the deacons. Amen? And we're so grateful to the Lord today. Amen. Amen. His goodness. Amen. And where He has brought us from. Amen. We not only say Happy Father's Day to you, but Elder Johnson, we have a gift for you saying Happy Father's Day, and you are the oldest father here. God bless you. Thank you. 